Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below or shoot us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com. All of these videos are made for people just like you based off the feedback we receive. If you have questions, let us know and we'll make a video just for you. Don't forget to subscribe and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Today we're talking about how to treat hypothermic lambs. Without further delay, let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm, especially in early livestock. I've got a special uh, video for you here I didn't plan on making, but this could happen to you. Uh, happens all the time, especially in the colder climates. This here is a hypothermic lamb. Uh, this lamb was born premature. It was found down. And so the question now becomes, what do I do? Um, well, heat lamp ain't gonna cut it, folks. Um, no way. The first thing you wanna do is take your finger, put it inside the lamb's mouth and feel if that inside of that mouth is cold. Um, if it's cold, you wanna feel if the animal has the suck reflex. Um, and in this case, no suck reflex. The animal is extremely cold and is actually doing much better than when I first brought it in. When I first brought it in, um, it was pretty much dead. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm hot dipping this lamb. Uh, word of caution, uh, when you do this, uh, that is it. It is game over. Uh, the mom will not take the baby back after this occurs, um, but it beats having dead animals. You can do this exact same process with a lamb or with a goat. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting this water as hot as I can stand it um, and as hot as this baby can stand it and I am going to get this baby in here and I'm trying to warm them up. Now this is not going to warm up their core. Uh, this is just going to warm up uh, their peripheral, uh, their peripheral vascular and kind of start getting the, the ball rolling. I'm going to let them warm up like this for a few minutes and then I'm going to tube feed them something warm. I highly recommend you hot dip them first um, and then give them a warm tube feeding. The reason for that is uh, if you just go straight from hypothermia into the hot tube feeding, uh, you can cause the animal to go into shock and die. So I'm watching his head, I'm cradling it, making sure that I'm not cutting off his primary air supply and to make sure that he um, is as comfortable as he can be without um, pinching off his esophagus. Um, his respirations, you'll notice their respirations will slowly start to increase. Um, and that's the, that's what you want. So I'm just letting him get hot in here and letting him warm up. I'm going to do this for about three or four minutes. Hypothermia, um, pretty easy to pull them out of so long as you catch them before they die. The body responds really well to getting cold. Um, the system just essentially slows down. And once we can heat back up his core body temperature, we can get him um, going again. So I'm gonna leave you for right now. And then here in a minute, we're going to uh, remove him, dry him off, lay him on his side. And then I'm gonna demonstrate uh, how we go about doing a tube feeding. The lamb is out of the hot water. Its respirations right now are, are pretty slow, um, but he is starting to warm up. I feel inside of his mouth, he's ice cold. So what I'm doing now is I've got my formula that I've made. Um, I'll put a recipe, we'll talk about the recipe at another time. Um, I have a high fat mixture in here um, and it is just about as warm as I can stand to have my finger in. Um, and this is what's gonna heat up this, this um, core temperature on our little fella here. So I don't wanna give him too much. I just wanna give him just a little bit uh, it's still just a little bit too hot right now. If if it's uncomfortable for you to keep your finger in there, then it's it's a little too hot. So I'm gonna give it a few seconds here. Yeah, actually, we're we're pretty good right there. All right. So I am going to use my tube, and I am going to measure from the sternum right here, and I'm going to measure up to the animal's mouth. And I'm gonna see where I'm at, right about here. That tells me exactly, or they're about how far in I need to put. After I've determined my length, you wanna straighten their head out as much as you can. You wanna go over top of the tongue 
and we're just slowly going to push it down into the throat. And you shouldn't be feeling, you're going to feel a little bit of resistance as it goes past the cords. And it's down and in. And we're going to relax. Okay. Hold this up. It's going to gravity feed. So real quick, I've got some fat in here. So I want to stir this up. Make sure it's emulsified as much as I can get it. Then quickly, while it's still emulsified, I'm going to give him about one ounce. So I'll fill this up quickly, up to one ounce. And then I stop. That's it. And I'm just going to leave it in there and let it gravity feed in. Once it's done gravity feeding in, I'm going to give it a few seconds and you should hear kind of like a pop sound come from this. And that pop sound signifies that it's done. So at this point, quickly and in one swift motion, remove the tube. And that's it. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna help his core temperature to heat up. And it's gonna give him uh, some nutrition that he needs. Do not attempt to bottle feed an animal that cannot swallow. They will aspirate and they will die, okay? So at this point, he is, he's still cold. We're gonna get him warmed up. I'm gonna get a warm blanket. Um, for him and I'm gonna wrap him up in a warm dry towel and then we're gonna set him on a heating pad and let him warm up. Um, more than likely he should recover. It's gonna take a little bit of time, um, but we should be okay. So uh, this is another method you can do other than putting him on the heating pad. I feel it actually works a little bit better. And as you can see, our guy here is doing much better. If you wanna see the respirations, you can watch the tip of his nose, see how his nose is flaring. It means he's taking a breath every time and you can see his chest is rising and falling as well. So we're in, we're in a uh, good territory here. His respirations have come back. He was pretty much dead when we found him. He was having respirations of uh, just a couple guppy breathing, maybe per minute. Um, his mouth is still really cold, um, but we're on our way. We're warming up. There's no suck reflex. His mouth is still cold. Um, so we're just going to keep warming him up. We're going to keep him on. A heating pad uh, keep using the blow dryer on him to warm him up and slowly slowly but surely what's going to happen is is as that blood flows to the outside of his body and back to the inside it's going to slowly start to warm him up um, until we are able to uh, get a suck reflex out of him and get him to actually drink um, through a bottle we are going to have to continue tube feeding him um, every four hours minimum um, and eventually he'll snap out of it. And I, this may seem like a lot of work, um, but the reality is, is um, it beats the heck out of the alternative, which is letting a baby die. So he's going to make it. He's going to be okay. You can see that um, he's doing okay. We've got a, some reflex in the eyes. Um, usually if you poke around the eye, you can see he'll kind of wince and move his eye a little bit. Um, and you can see that he's breathing on his own. So we're in good territory. Um, and we will keep you guys posted.